Hi, and welcome back to Pi Simple GUI 2020. We're on lesson eight, which is asynchronous windows. Uh, asynchronous windows means that we are not going to block on our read call. So let's do uh, a, a typical Pi Simple GUI program. I actually had a request from someone for me to do uh, a tutorial from scratch. So that's what we're going to do here. This is going to be a timer. And I'm going to have three rows in it. Uh, the first row has our timer, then our uh, the label. The next one is going to be the output. So the size, let's make it 20 characters. Uh, and let's make it uh, font. I say any here, which means use the default. We'll say size 15. And let's put a key. And you'll notice I, I make keys all caps. And I put dashes at the beginning and the end. And the reason for that is uh, it makes them really stand out in your code. When, when you see uh, a string like that, I mean, you can scan and quickly find it. That you, you just know that that statement has something to do with a key. Uh, so there's our layout. Uh, now comes the window. We're going to make a window, and we're going to call it timer as well. We'll have a layout. And I'm going to set a flag called keep on top to true. That way, when we run this, it will um, stay on top of PyCharm. You won't get lost behind here. So normally, we have event and values is window.read. If event is none, we'll do it as an or event is exit then we will break and we are going to close the window at the end okay so there's our typical program right and we're going to print the event when we run this uh, it's pretty simple we're just going to see our go event and notice that this read call stops right it pins until some event happens asynchronous windows don't pin or, or they do but it's only for a certain amount of time and what are some of the uses for async windows when would you want to do that well we're making a stopwatch or a timer now if you were to go do a web thing, let's say you're going to scrape a site every 10 minutes, then you can put a timeout of 10 minutes there. If you're on a Raspberry Pi, maybe you want to pull some hardware every 100 milliseconds. Servicing queues and in a multi-threaded environment, you may have queues that you want to go check. Uh, Multi-window applications we'll talk about. Animations, here you would update an image element with a new frame every 33 milliseconds. If you're using a built-in debugger, then you'll want to run async windows. We'll talk about that in another lesson. Uh, an important thing for you to do when you're running asynchronous windows is to be a good corporate citizen. Don't use zero as your timeout unless you absolutely have to. You're on a pie. It's critical. Um, one thing you can do instead of read, if you need to just uh, quickly refresh your window, you can call refresh. And that does sort of like a read, uh, except that it uh, doesn't return values. It, it happens quicker. Um, and so if you set this value, your timeout value, too low, it will consume your CPU. So let's take a look at what I mean by this. This is a, uh, a little widget 
that is written in PySimple GUI that I leave running um, so I can tell when things aren't necessarily going well with my programs. Like in this case, we're going to put a timeout is equal to zero. And your program will run. It looks fine. We click go. It's not going to print, but we click go. It seems to be fine, right? I'm able to move the window. It, it doesn't appear as if there is any kind of problem happening. But as we sit here, notice this core number 14 has gone to 100% CPU usage. Now, that's not such a big deal on this 20 core machine, but there is the side effect of whatever else is running on that core is now being punished by your timeout equals zero. Um, so if you need to go really quickly, you could still make it, say, 20 milliseconds. And that's still 50 times a second that you're going to be running through your code uh, in this loop, which is still fast, right? I mean, 50 times a second, what, what are you doing that you need to update that quick? So just, but just by limiting it to 20 milliseconds, you'll see that core usage went back down to 40 something. Um, I'm sharing it with the recording software, I believe. That's why it, it's not at zero. So be a good corporate citizen. Don't use zero there. Let's make a, a timer. Well, just as a, a demonstration. So to do that, we can do a couple of things. We can um, say that we have a counter that we start at zero, and let's say in our loop, we're going to add one to it, and we're going to delay a thousand milliseconds. And uh, when we run this, nothing's going to happen because we didn't change, we didn't output. So let's output to that text element that we created. So we're going to do uh, an update and we'll pass in counter. Now when we run it, we will see that this updates once a second. Now for crude kind of timing things, that's okay. Um, there are times though where if, I, I should have, let me explain this a little bit different. The timeout is, means wait up to this amount of time for an event to happen. If it doesn't happen in that amount of time, then return a timeout event to me. If something does happen, say a button click, then return right away. So that means if I click go, it returns right away. And so our counter goes up really quick. It's no longer waiting a thousand milliseconds. It is returning right away. So we need to do something about that. Plus, not only that, if you're, uh, if you're running a timeout, there's some drift that's going to happen because it, it is not zero amount of time to execute all this code, right? It actually takes a, a couple of milliseconds or more. So over time, your uh, timer is going to drift. So let's import time. And time has a function that we'll use um, called time. And that returns uh, seconds, and if we look at it here, return the current time in seconds since the uh, epoch. So that's, uh, I forgot when, in 1970 or something. It's a big, it's a floating point number, so that you can get fractions of seconds. Uh, so that's where we started. Let's, every time we go through our loop, Let's compute the amount of time it has 
past, right? So that would be the current time in seconds minus the start time. Let's multiply that by a thousand to give us milliseconds. So delta is the number of milliseconds since the event loop started. And then let's also round it so that it's a nice even decimal number. Okay, so what we have is every time we come through the loop, this value delta will be the number of milliseconds since the start. And we will output that uh, as a a time format. So let's make it uh, minutes, seconds, and fractions of seconds. Just for your ends here, right? So to get our minutes, it will be the, the, the delta divided by a thousand, because it was milliseconds before, and we're going to divide it by 60 to get to seconds. And we want a zero padded two uh, digit decimal output. Then we want our colon. Here's where we get the seconds. So it's delta divided by a thousand and it's mod 60 because it's going to count up to 60 and then it goes to seconds and uh, we have the same sort of format we want. 0 to D. Then we have our decimal point and we want the number of milliseconds. And we know that the delta is in milliseconds. So we simply take mod 1000 that gives us the number of milliseconds portion of uh, the timer. So minutes, seconds, milliseconds, you know, pieces or, or fractions of seconds. Let's whip through this thing at a hundred millisecond rate. So let's get rid of our old one and run this. And um, what you'll see is uh, our window updating at about a a hundred millisecond rate. Let's crank things up a little bit, make it look a little more impressive. Let's make it like 33 milliseconds. And you'll see that the fraction of seconds really starts moving because we're updating this window every 33 milliseconds. Now, because we're computing the time, we're not going to drift. So if I grab this window and move it around, notice that the timer has stopped in the window. The tkinter is holding up the read and the events for us. When it comes back, the because we're computing the time, it shows you the correct amount of time that has elapsed. We can click the go button as much as we want. We can do all kinds of things in this window, and it's not going to change the accuracy of our timer. Uh, I think that's it for this. Um, have fun with these. They, you, they will be very handy for uh, future lessons as well when we're going out and doing scraping or something else on a periodic basis. Thank you for your time. Enjoy Python Bugui.